Welcome to TGIF. I'm Tim. I'm Gina. And we are glad you joined us again this week. But this is、uh, an important weekend. Oh, it's Halloween. It's Halloween, but it is also time to change our clocks and our watches. I don't have a watch. But this is the good time change because we get to fall back, which means more sleep. sleep. I have to tell a little secret here. He is obsessive and compulsive about changing the clocks in our house. Sometimes it's five o'clock in the afternoon. The day before the time change, which isn't until 2 a.m. the next day, and he is already changing the clocks. And I think sometimes it's because he just wants dinner early. But do you remember before cell phones when it was crucial that you changed your clock, particularly your alarm clock, so you got up on time? Now, with cell phones, we're pretty spoiled, but there are still a lot of clocks in the house to change. And I remember in some of our cars back in the day where it took A while to figure out how to change the clock on that car. Did any of you have those cars? I'm pretty sure I had a pickup that went for a whole year without getting its time changed. That's right. So don't forget to set your clocks back so you are ready for church on Sunday. Whether you are joining us live in person or online, you want to make sure that you are on time. And that takes us to our word of the day. And that word is change. Change. There's a lot of change that has happened in our lives recently. Yep, and there's a lot to come, that's for sure. That's just kind of life. Things, we're always changing. Seasons change, time change, lives change, re,、uh, relationships change. And especially when you look at the, li- the lives of people in the Bible. I mean, the Bible is filled with change. For me, one of the first ones that, that really pops out is location. Location is a big change. When you think of Adam and Eve placed、mm-hmm. in the garden, I mean, oh man, they had it all.、Mm-hmm. Walking with God in the garden in a perfect place. And through that moment of making a decision, they are, their location changes.、Mm-hmm. They are then put into this world of brokenness. But change happens so many times in the Bible. One to th- remember also is Noah, right? Noah goes from a land. Kind of a guy to a boat. <laughs> so that was a huge change. When I think of Abraham, Abraham leaving his, his homeland to, to travel across to where God is leading them, all of these have this underlying tone of, of a God that is about moving people.、Mm-hmm. And I think when we find ourselves in COVID, we've been locked and we've been locked into one place. And the challenge with that is. We were designed as people to be on the move,、mm-hmm. designed to be people that are interacting. I think another big change we see in the Bible are name changes. Isn't that a crazy one?、Mm-hmm. When you think of Abraham and Sarah, that was not their name to start out with. They were Abraham and Sarai. And so, in their movement and following of God, God changes their name to Abraham and Sarah. There are other names that get changed. We talked last week about Jacob wrestling with God. And in that, Jacob's name gets changed to Israel, and Israel will go on to be、uh, the father of the nations of Israel. We think of Paul. There's another one. Paul was Saul before, and, God, and, Jesus, and there was this name change again. We see these name changes. Location and name changes are big changes that we see in the Bible. But I think focus changes are huge. I don't、yeah. know about you, but we've had to change our focus、mm-hmm. at times. But is our focus always on the right thing? No, I think human nature is to focus on me. It's kind of an I focused, self centered attitude. And if you look at the word sin, I is the middle letter in sin. And go back to that garden story you just reminded,、mm-hmm. reminded us、exactly. of. When everything changed was when sin entered the world. And I is in the middle of sin. And far too often, that is our focus. What do I want? How do I want it? When do I want it? Because it's all about me. And we get ourselves trapped into this world and lose the focus that we should have. And our focus should be a God focused mind, attitude, and everything we do and say, God should be the focus. Even when you look at your finances, how you spend your money, where you spend your money. 
you can tell if it's got focus or not. Your time, how you spend your time, where you spend your time, you can tell if it's an I focus or a God focus, even in relationships, because it's easy to fall into the ways of the world and what the world says is fine. And in the American dream. Yeah, and there's even times when people thought they were doing what God wanted them mm. to do, but when they turn back and look at it, it still reflected what they wanted. Even when we talked about Abraham and Sarah, right? God promised that he'd be the father of, of nations, of many, many mm -hmm. people. And in that promise, Sarah would give birth to a child and they couldn't wait for God's timing and God's plan mm. and thought they'd help God out. Mm -hmm. How many times have we thought, oh, this is helping God out. We're gonna help God along here. Mm -hmm. That is, again, an eye focus. Even with a spiritual value in it, we can still consume it and take it in as ours mm -hmm. rather yeah. than God at work. And that's mm -hmm. what we have been trying to, uh, to engage our children, to engage other people, is that we are looking to see where God is at work. Mm -hmm. And then we engage where God is at work to assure ourselves that it's not about me. That's right. And that's not easy. That is for sure. And if we remember the first and the greatest commandment exactly. each and every day and everything we do, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Matthew 22, verse 37. Wow, if we said that prior to everything we did, before we spent our money, before we decided where our time was going to be spent, before we made life decisions, if we kept that as a focus, I think we forget we were made by God and for God. And that was actually what happened in the garden. Mm -hmm. That's where we started this whole change about it. And that's what happened in the garden. They lost that focus about the one that made them, mm. the one that breathed life into them. God has breathed life into you. And you've got to believe that with all that you are and all that you are mm -hmm. to be, that it is a God of all creation that has breathed that life into you the challenge is, are you keeping it for yourself or are you allowing the spirit actually to flow through you and to engage others and help others to move along? We've had places where people are just seem to be stuck. Yeah. And how do we help them to move? And that movement is, is God at work. And that's, right. that's really hard. We have a lot of friends going through a lot of tough stuff right now. Life and death situations. Uh, big decisions in life. Marriage challenges. Absolutely. And the only peace and purpose that we will find is when our focus is on God. It's so easy to focus on all the troubles that are going on and all the struggles and the trials, but true peace and true purpose is only found when your focus is on God. And that just seems so easy when you say it, but especially when things are going well, exactly. we, can, we can easily preach that to somebody, but man, when you're in the midst of that situation of a child's life or a marriage on the brink, mm -hmm. exactly. and, that's and, a tough place. Even within the life of the church, right? We, mm -hmm. we find ourselves a lot of times struggling with what it means to be the church, mm -hmm. not only as a community within the church, but outside the community and how are we being the church in the city of Modesto right now and mm -hmm. how are we reaching even beyond Modesto I know that it's it's easy to just say uh, you know I'm gonna leave it for somebody else yeah. but when you see a problem when you see an issue maybe it is God calling you to step forward and to change your location to change the way that you're looking at a problem mm -hmm. and actually move you towards it to help others to solve it or to help others to move in a way that creates a vision of where God can live into this mm -hmm. space. That is really hard. I think when we talk about the Beatitudes, there's another perfect example. When we were in Israel, we went to that place, right? We actually, I think... We did the devotion. We there. did the devotion that day. And it was powerful just to think that we were in a place that God was reminding, mm -hmm. reminding the disciples of the, of the value in life and that even though you're in a struggle doesn't mean that it doesn't have great value and purpose for God. Mm -hmm. He's going to use it. He's going to use everything. Guaranteed he's going to change you. That's right. And, and maybe that's why he's allowed this to pass through his hands into your life, is what is he trying to do in you? So if you're on that eye focus in the midst of a trial, 
You're gonna try to fix it. You're gonna think of all the reasons why poor me, poor me, why me, why now? But if you're in that situation and looking for God and focused on God, and remember that God has made you for purpose, for his purpose, he's going to use it. And you will get on the other side of that struggle. And in the midst of it, oh, it's hard. But God's promises are true and they are real. And, and that's why we have the scriptures. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why the scriptures are there so that you can see other people that went through other ordeals and great problems and struggles. And in the midst of making mistakes, mm -hmm. God still continued to use them and change them and grow them. And that is what discipleship is all about. So when we talk about change, discipleship is all about change. If you think you're just going to come into discipleship and or read your scriptures and not be changed, mm. I'm going to say that's, that's right. not true. Right. So not only is the time changing yes. this weekend. Change your clocks. How can we look at today and every day as an opportunity to change where God wants us to change? So our question we're going to leave you with is, is your life I focused, me, 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 or God focused? And when you look into your finances, your relationships, and your marriage, your parenting, if you look into each of those, I think you would, will quickly be able to identify, ooh, it's all about me. I like what me. you said, too. You said that we have to be honest with ourselves because mm. it's in those moments you say, well, kind of that works or that's working its way that way. It's really being honest with yourself and being authentic and saying, mm -hmm. no, yeah, that's about me. So the question this week is definitely challenging. I know that I... I'm going to be taking that same question and applying it to my life because it's so easy to lose sight of that God focus. I mean, I'm thinking we get an hour extra sleep, but you know what? We get an hour extra to read our Bible. Yes. Whoa, that's way cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to hold you to that. Okay. We hope you have a great week and we love when you share this with others because maybe this spoke to you in some way, but I'm sure that God has a plan for somebody who needs to hear this message about change and focus. focus. So have a great week. See you next time. Bye. Bye.